All right, we welcome in someone, and we, we say very special a lot, but this one is. It really is. is. This one is a little bit different, and I'm so excited to have you on the show for many different reasons. One, to hear your story, everything that you're doing at the moment, but also to break Jordan. And I think you have the keys Whoa. to doing that. I think you can do it better than anyone else. <laughs> Guys, we welcome on to the show today, Caitlin Vakola. Welcome yeah. into the show. Yeah. Welcome to my little sister. Yeah. Now, you have, like, the most amazing story. Congrats. Like, yeah. you, you're doing everything. Yes, I love it already. <laughs> <laughs> All you guys, if you can see the eyes in here, I love it. But instead of us telling your story, do you want to just give us, like, a 20-second uh, 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 debrief about this? How about what you Before do? we get into that, why don't we do quick fire questions? Just oh, to warm up. Okay. And then we'll get into her story. Okay, nice. yes. So, yes, this is my little sister. And uh, but she's just my sister now because she can probably run me over. So we just, every uh, interview, we're just going to start with some kind of quick fire questions. It's kind of called like the concept of meet me on the fire. Okay. You know? So first question: What's your favorite chocolate? Black Forest. Mm. Really? Yeah. Didn't even think about that. So that's that's yeah. on brand. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Okay. Second one. It's like a goat chat. Give her a goat, like between league or rugby. I could play it. Oh, okay. Uh, let's go. Oh, we have to go wingers. We have to go wingers. Let's go. Oh, I don't want to get this one wrong Ooh. now, Mark. I don't want to overthink this one. Let's go wingers. The best winger in rugby and the best winger that league has ever produced. Mato or Mark, I might throw this one to you. Go. Yeah. Oh, that's nice of you. Um, let's go. <laughs> let's. We can just ask what who's the goat winger? Yeah, who is the greatest you? winger, do you think? And it can be in rugby or rugby league. I'm going to say Portia Woodward. Mm, you right. Mm. Yeah, what makes Portia so good? She's just a freak. Like, oh my gosh, my voice just goes. <laughs> <laughs> First podcast or? <laughs> <laughs> you just got to talk into it too. Soon. Sorry. She's just a freak. Like when you look at her, you don't even want to run at her. And she's just, she backs herself. She's confident. Everything that I would want to be as a winger. I heard that she's so good that she is not expected to pass. Like when they pass it to her. Like, she like, don't can plan she pass to she catch the ball. I haven't <laughs> we will follow you, and if you get tackled, we'll do everything Literally. else. And, like, she'll slow down if you're chasing her, and she'll just finish <laughs> off. So. Oh, yeah, I love that. She enjoys the contact, you can tell. Like, yeah. she looks for it. Uh, and I also thought that in one of the biggest moments of the Women's Rugby World Cup last year was when um, Portia went down early. Yeah. And I thought that was us. I thought it was curtains. Like, I, I'll be honest, I'll be, put my hand up and say, I'm Mark, and I thought we'd lost that game purely on the backs of losing such an important oh, person. Yeah, no you belief, mate. Faith. I know, but no that's belief. how I felt. She's that important. Yeah. Imagine no. if she had stayed on, though. How much oh. we would have won by? Down probably yeah. uh, 70. 70. Uh, next question. If you could be a Marvel hero... Uh, actually, no. If you could be any Disney character... Stitch. <laughs> <laughs> What is up with your infatuation? Uh, that's Lilo and Stitch, right? Yeah, yeah. Where, where, what is your uh, infatuation with Stitch and your love for that character? He's just so crazy and psycho, but he's also very caring. And oh, loving, that's mm. and I feel oh, like. Oh no, that makes sense. I feel like I resonate. You see a piece yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. At Jordan could be a Disney <laughs> character. <laughs> Which uh, one would you reckon he'd be? Do you know the in the Lilo and Stitch the um? <laughs> oh wow. The 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 obese monster. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh let's God. go home, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> let's go home. She said the O word. She said the O word. The park, that's the home run on day one. You did ask her to meet you at the five. <laughs> mm. You know, Brooke, you seen the ginger friend? <laughs> the, the glasses? <laughs> <laughs> they, no, Lilo no, goes no, hiding. No, Remember no, when no, Lilo goes no, that ginger no, friend no, hiding? No. <laughs> okay, we're almost there. Uh, what's the last song you sang in the shower? I actually was singing this morning Summer's Song. Please don't. And I was imagining if I ever had to perform. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, for context of that, this is the most amazing family. That's their sister. Their sister oh, sisters are mean singing. <laughs> not the, not the practicing in case I got no, that. I was thinking like, oh, if I had to do a sound check and she wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's funny? On the weekend, someone said, "Is uh, sorry, guys. This is just this feels like a blooming Fano uh, bloody no advertisement." Media. But we are a great family. And Toranga for the Soul Sessions gig, this girl came up to me. She was like, "Is Summer here? She's singing." And I was like, "Yes." And then she was like, "Oh my gosh, yes!" And then she goes, "Is Caitlin here singing?" And I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, no, "Well, she can't." I go, "Caitlin can sing, but she's not here singing." And then she goes, 
you need to tell Caitlin to sing more. And I said, well, we don't tell someone to play rugby, so <laughs> everyone, everyone can just be in their lanes, yeah? Everyone can just be in their lanes. <laughs> All right, let's finish up the Meet Me at the Five. Finish the sentence. My biggest accomplishment in life is? Staying alive. Oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we went there. Mm, I love Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Beautiful, my sis. Oh, I can't wait let's till we go. get Let's go. can't wait till we Those get Those truthful it. ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking about life, uh... And I know you probably get asked this a lot, and you are someone who is who mm. has a very huge um, social media following. Not that we care, you know, because I know you don't care about it. That's just it's an expression of an extension of yourself and like who you are. But like, who? How would you describe Caitlin? How for people listening, what what is it that you do? Why should they? <laughs> why should they keep listening? Nah, um, <laughs> you know, who are you? What's brought you to here, sis? What's brought me to here is that you are my brother. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, we good. Sure. What do you mean, like, like who am I like, on social like, media? Yeah, what do you do? What do you do? What like, who is Caitlin? I feel like, oh, I feel like I put a brand of myself out on social media, but it's not actually who I am. Mm. Like, like if you know who I am, yeah. But mm. I put a version of myself. No, nah, that's there. definitely you. It's definitely a part of you. Yeah, okay, 100%. okay. <laughs> um, I just feel like. I try to be relatable. I try mm. to be open. Like uh, I feel like in a lot of and nowadays a lot of people are not with, like with the oversharing. But I'm fine with oversharing about my life on social media. Um, I feel like I'm funny sometimes. You're very funny. Other times I just need to shush. <laughs> um, yeah, that's how I would explain myself. A and what do you do professionally? I am a professional rugby player <laughs> 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 and dual athlete at a very good suit. <laughs> you have one that you like more. Pardon? You have one that you like more? I get to run more in Union, whereas in league, if you're a winger, like you just come in for a few carries and you got to get out. Get back out. So can you just, uh, and this is good for you to practice because mm -hmm. where you're going, you're going to have to do this more. But talk to us, how did you become uh, a World Cup playing rugby league player? How did you become in the silver, uh, Black Fern squad right silver now? Silver Ferns. Black Fern serious? squad right That's now. That's next. That's <laughs> next if you want it to be. No, I no, believe no, it too. So, so what's the journey? Take people like from playing touch like to where you are now and actually say your achievements because no one thinks you'll eat. So we just <laughs> need to actually know because no one knows. Okay, okay. So I started playing rugby league because my best friend wanted someone to play with and I said no for at first. But oh, you play touch, right? So you were playing. Yeah, uh, well, I pl we play touch with like our family, not <laughs> like seriously. Hey, we were on. <laughs> <laughs> um, DBF? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, you actually came to m my first game. Mm. And you left half at halftime. Oh, that's on brand. <laughs> that's mm. so on brand for him. Yeah, no, at least you guys know that I leave. That I'm always leaving. I'm always leaving somewhere. Hey, I appreciate you turning up. Great. <laughs> um, no, and then from there I got noticed for for Auckland reps, so I played for them, and then from there. I got this 80 meter runaway try. Awesome. And I don't oh, know come what on now. <laughs> I Not the 80 meters. I don't know what it was about that, but like, that somehow. Someone saw potential in me, and then I made the Kiwi Ferns that first year. And then but you've been and played NRL first, right? Too or no? I made the Kiwi. I debuted for the Kiwi Ferns, oh, and then the too. next year I played for NRL. Wait, hold on a second. You you went Kiwis first without playing any NRL. Yeah. yeah. Oh, as you do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I feel like because the team I was in, we lost every game, so I feel like that's oh. not really an accomplishment. So you look like a superstar. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're screwing the trade. Okay, so I what was it? I scored one try. So when did you know, like playing playing leagues, is like when did you know, like this is actually something? Because you you just said like a, fr a best friend told you to play. Mm. When did it become something like? I actually want to do this. Like, do you remember? I remember in uh, my first camp for the Kiwi Ferns, and did you guys know how you hit me? Oh, yes. do we? She, oh, she was she's my, she's my favorite. Yeah, I don't know who she was, but she was my center. And I remember... She done a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know her at the time. I don't give you inside yes. jokes. Shush. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, but then I remember on the, I was on the training field with her and I was yelling at her. Oh, and oh, oh, I know. oh, oh. She actually said oh, on wow. like a show that I was yelling at her. <sighs> I know. But I remember in that moment I was like... Mm. Like, what were you yelling at I the goat? Because like isn't she like one of the goats? Of I, I yeah, know, what were you I yelling know. at LeBron? Can you? I had to humble myself. No, no, but what? I'm trying to remember. And like, you know, as a winger, you have to calm. Oh, okay. So I'd be like, come out, come out, come out. We're on five, we're on five. <laughs> I bet yeah, like she yeah. might have liked it. She, she liked the confidence. She'd be like, like that. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And then I think just that camp, like, I was like, man, like, if this could be my job for the rest of my life, I would be happy. 
Mm. So what is your day to day like? Like, how do you decide? Oh, okay, today I'm doing league, and tomorrow, wow, well, I'm doing union. Like, how? What? So, <laughs> <laughs> no. So this year they off they, they they gave out full time contracts for the Black Ferns. So, is that the first time it's happened? This is second year. Okay, but cool. last year, yeah. Um, but before this, like the Black Ferns were juggling full time jobs mm. and playing rugby. So, I, I'm I'm lucky. Anyways, um, so we go. We, it's just like a job. Like we come in at nine, and then go home at like. 2.30 and that's like every day. Like the rugby boys do too, like yeah. it's like a career. And we have a day awesome. off on Wednesday. It's just like going to a normal job. Brooke skipped a little bit there, so uh, okay. sorry, we sorry, will sorry. come back to that. I love that. But so after league, like you go to the NRL and you mm. go to the Newcastle Knights and then yeah. I know, I remember you telling us you have to move away. You're quite a homebody. Yeah. Like talk to us about that. And I don't know how much we're allowed to go into that, but uh, that was an interesting situation, eh? Yeah. Uh, the what NRL and the know? Newcastle. Well, I want to know... <laughs> I want to know everything. What okay. happened? What happened in Newcastle when you went to the NRL? So, when we met, when I when I found out I made the NRL, I went over there, and so this season we were supposed to go over there and play, but it ended up getting cancelled. So I went over there for pretty much n- no reason. Um, but <laughs> and, wha- and, wha- and why did it get cancelled? <laughs> because of COVID. Mm. But you know, in back at when it first started, when everyone had to go in MIQ and mm. you had to get on the waiting list to to come back home, and you had to, yeah, we just ne- we had no guarantee of when we were coming home. So I remember, I remember you didn't really have a good season or were able to have a season because of yeah. COVID, and then your next goal was to make the World Cup team, which was in uh, London. Yes. Um. And so, how did you do that, and how was that experience? So, we in- I ended up got going back before the World Cup to Aussie, but because we ended up having our season, and. I didn't actually do that well there, to be honest. I didn't play well, but I, I think it's just because um, the coach for the Kiwi Ferns was nice to me. Mm. But I'm a, I'm a really good trainer. Like, I'm so disciplined. I'm strong. I'm you fast. Are. So I think that my discipline was actually what got me into the, for the World Cup team. Caitlin, <laughs> is there any truth to it, too, that you stood me up uh, for an interview on Mark Ped Sports? Oh. oh, tomato Mark. Did I reply to your message? Oh, she saw it. Oh. <gasps> I remember speaking to, is her name Savannah? Savannah's your media rep for New Zealand Rugby League. Yeah, and then. Mark, take that aggressive out of your. I heard that. It was was a punch. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But. um, No, it wasn't on you. It definitely wasn't on you. It wasn't on you. I was just being silly. I don't know how to respond. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. That's good media report. How do you find it? How do you find the world, like, of, of what you do? Because it's hard, right? You are, you want to be out there and you want to be the best and you. God's honest truth, you do want to play. Like, yeah, they've yeah. got the hiding, but you do want to be out there and, and you want to play. Like, is this always what you felt like you were made for? You grew up being like, yeah, I'm going to do something in that realm. Mm. No. What was... Okay, let's go backwards then. What did okay. you think you were going to be when you grew up? Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We li- no, no, no. Um, I played netball. Like, I, I didn't think anything. I hadn't see myself as having, like, being a professional athlete. I loved sport, but I just... Like, I hadn't found my craft, you know, like, mm. as a kid. Because I was so mentally ill i was just so focused on everything i was going through like i, I didn't have any goals let's just make me. tomorrow yeah oh i get that and no, then not even that where did you find it then where did let's you just find run the away from home <laughs> <laughs> this no, is no, n- <laughs> you know i love about this this is new media so like uh, uh, caitlin doesn't caitlin only knows how to be honest and so like no. i think no no it's not it's not no, bad, it's great i remember like uh caitlin growing up and her, your thing was like everyone's got their thing i don't have my thing yeah and um, Caitlin's actually been really honest, like on her socials and in the past, about kind of where she's where she's at, where she was at with, um, you know, not wanting to be around, not wanting to be here, suicide and things like that. And um, did you do you feel like sport saved, helped save yeah. your life? Yeah, mm-hmm. like a lot of people have like a why as to why they play. You know, they play sport. My why is myself. Like it just makes me happy, and like, or, yeah, it definitely saved me. You, you saved me. I know no, you have no. uh, amazing no, no. teachers around you, like obviously Jordan. Oh, no. I know a lot about your mom, and you know you got a good family and a yeah. base. Do you feel like sport was your teacher? Like you learn so much between those lines. You learn how to lose. You learn how to win. You learn how to deal with adversity. You might not know when you're going through it. Yeah, but you learn a lot between the lines. That, yeah, I think it was definitely a crucial part of what I had to do to grow up. But like, a lot of it was my family. Yeah. Also, don't try and fight, honey, because that's not gonna. <laughs> that, that, that ain't gonna end too well. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, I sorry. This is I. I don't know your story. That's yeah. okay. Mitchell. I really don't know story. Mm. And and I really do. It does fascinate me because you seem to be at peace with 
um, a part of your life that was super trivial for you. Like it was something that you obviously lived a lot inside your head and mm. you're at peace with it because you can you can literally joke about the idea that you were thinking, you know, uh, that was it for me. I, I don't know what my purpose is in life mm. and I'm uncomfortable with that. Now there'll be people who are listening who are mm. looking for that same kind of, I guess, being settled in that space and wanting to look back and go, okay, I'm comfortable with where I am in that now. What were some of the triggers, I guess, that not away from sport, what were some mm. of the triggers that led you there and and being in such a comfortable space now to be able to say, man, I wasn't well, and now I feel like I know who I am? I think not, like, my I had really good support, but, like, they also didn't feel sorry for me, so I'm going to get emotional. It's all right. I'm here. Um... Take your time. Um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> no, you're all right. No, um. You told you, you know what, you don't even have to go there, but I feel like no, it's I such a go powerful. There. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go there. Sorry, cool. I just I cry everything. Jordan Absolutely. Knows. No, take your anything. time. You're good. Um, I think. I don't think everyone has what I have. Like I have a really, I have a really awesome support system. Like my <laughs> my brother. I know everyone looks at my brother like this hard headed, <laughs> stubborn, like arrogant. <laughs> oh yeah, I got oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> like, but he was actually a really, really big part of like my healing. And I remember like when I was in like probably the worst time in my mental health. Like he, he literally spent like a month with me like every day. Just yeah, just. <laughs> Just like and be singing to me, he would, he would train me every day, like just to help get my mind off it. And yeah, I, I know a lot of people don't have support systems like me, but if there is someone that you can go to, like just al allowing myself to be helped, because mm. a lot of the time we're offered support, but we don't accept it, um, because we think we can do it all on our own. But yeah. I'll never forget it. Oh my gosh! No, no, no. Yeah, I, I don't want it to be cry. one of those ones. <laughs> I like. Yeah. I, I I remember like um, and uh, I think the reason why we can, it's not about laughing about it. I think what we, I've me me and Kellen are sim real similar in the same way where we can find humor in anything. Sometimes what's what's funny to us is how close. You know, we got to things being real different. This new media, I didn't <laughs> think uh, I'd have my sister on talking about this one day, but like, what I want to say is like, there are people um, who maybe like are in the same exact position um, where so you know, someone you love is like going through something. And um, I remember just like Caitlin, just her thing was like, I don't have a thing. Like, I don't know how um, I can get a thing. And sport came along, you know, and changed her life, you know. But, like, she's stuck in there. Like, that, that you said something so beautiful. Like, you allowed yourself to just, just a tiny bit. You gave, like, an inch of just, like, uh, I might just believe you that it's going to be okay. I might just I might just believe that you believe in me. You know, and I know my sister got that. I know she knew she came from a su support system. I know that she knew that she came from people who loved her. But when you're in it, you can't hear it. And and it's and Caitlin, you know, you and I have talked about this. It wasn't just me. I I just happened to play a role at that time. And and, and yes, but you know, we 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 like there's so many other people that help support. But I I watched Caitlin after she decided that. Then I watched her work her ass off. Like Ka Caitlin is a completely different person to when it was just like playing touch and having fun. She dedicated herself. She went to training. She, it was like you knew two KDA. Like I might not be the skillful player. Or I might not know the game, but I want to be the fastest. Or I'm gonna I'm gonna try and run till I'm exhausted. And so you can talk now, but like that's how I felt. Like watching your journey is is is. It's, it's sobering to me because I remember like we w when we weren't going to get here and we just like got it stuck out the mud together. But like, do you do you feel like how you've you've been so open about your journey? Mm. Um, how other people, particularly you know, women have have asked you about it and and about your journey and things like that. Like, how have you found that? 
Um, I think just by sharing, like, mm. it's encouraging. Um, and I think a lot of women who've shared their story with me just want someone who's going to listen. Like, they don't actually want yeah. me to say anything. Um, but the biggest thing, like, that I learned in that ser- that chapter in my life was allowing people to help me. Like, it was actually up to me. It wasn't up to anyone else. And, yeah. This is the first time I've ever... I've never once longed for a brother or a sister. This is the first time <laughs> I'm watching this and I'm like, this is the most special... <laughs> Bond that I have, I have seen. He has never ever cried when I've like when I've gotten emotional in my speeches or whatever. He's never ever cried. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. But I cry. You've should seen me cry heaps. Should, should we celebrate? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah about that. That. I, I told, told you, you like hard nuts. I, I like, told she's you. Seen me cry heaps, but yeah, I, I think we we didn't. You know, there was definitely a journey, eh, Caitlin. And yeah. uh, for those listening, I think the Caitlin's what's hard now in this room is Caitlin. She's she's. She doesn't always fill the space because there's so much assumed knowledge in this room. And yeah, everyone, well, if, you're, if you're listening to this, um, it's not that Caitlin's not a good communicator. It's just like, um, this is part of her story, but she's just, she's sitting opposite me. So she's like, why do I need to tell anyone? Like, you know, you yeah. can. <laughs> and I can Maybe see I the eyes that have Stop looking at Jordan. Now. Just <laughs> look at my, to a mark. Hey, yeah. <laughs> look, what, what I just heard then and what I just uh, witnessed and... and with you, Brooke, yeah, on the idea of having a sibling. This ain't <laughs> how my sibling. This is like this is such an awesome, beautiful, uh, close bond that you both have, and your family has created. It's uh, a tribute to both your parents and you guys as a family that you, it, Jordan, a you you went on that journey, mm. and Caitlin, you were brave enough to take that journey, oh, and yeah. you guys can sit here and talk about it today. And it is important to share the story because there are people. We have to remember there are people who will be listening to this who do need to reach out to a brother or a sister or a friend and be like. Let's do this. Let's go on this journey together. And it was so cool to just I can get goosebumps just even talking about it. Facts. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just yeah. I just want to I just want to say too, like Katie, like if if you can, like I think it's so easy to listen to these conversations on the other side of it. Mm-hmm. But do you ever reflect on and remembering like, like what that felt like back then and, and being where you are now and what what has that taught you and what do you kind of keep in perspective and what do you try and share with other people? What do you share? Um, what do I share? <laughs> what about if it's like cheering? <laughs> what about if it's Stuff. like this? They're, they're obviously, people are uh, everyone goes through it. Like mm. everyone, everyone goes through it. And like Mike said, there's people going through it right now. But since you're on the other side and still on the healing journey, everyone's always on that journey. But does it allow you to? enjoy those wins that you have now so much more yeah and like Mm. thinking of the bigger picture like where i was back then where i am now where i could be in five years like and if yeah if anyone can like relate to what i've been through just like imagine how far you could come if you did let someone help you or if you did just like have that little little bit of hope which i didn't have if it wasn't for my family or if it wasn't for sport that's Mm. beautiful well um you, where do you want to? Where do you want to take this thing now? Now that you're here, now that you're in this position, like, oi, she's a, she's, I don't like using the word equivalent because it doesn't need to be equivalent to the male, but like, you're you're a black fern, like you're a full on professional. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, hey. We good. <laughs> oh, well, I hope we good. <laughs> <laughs> like, how does that feel, Susan? Like, where do you want to take this? What What would you like to do with sport? I I want to go to the Olympics. Like, that is my ultimate dream. Sevens? Or yeah, I want to go se- for sevens. I went to a camp, like, just before I went to my first camp for the Black Ferns 15s, and, like, I was on the field, and I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I feel like I had this moment, like, you're going to do it. Yeah, I, I believe I can do it, too. Like, that's what's so special about this, is, like, I know I can do it. Oh, the Olympics is, is pretty bloody cool. Yeah. Can, can we go to, I, I know um, it wasn't necessarily, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but. Um, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> you went on a real journey with finding about your culture and, and mm. you went full immersion. Like, tell us about you embracing that Māori side and, and leading hakas and, and teaching people in camps. Totally. Like, you went there and you did it. Like, how has that changed you? Um, so, we didn't grow up speaking Māori. Like, we weren't brought up around it and it, that wasn't anyone's fault. But I felt like, as an adult, it was my responsibility to mm. learn my whakapapa. Or so, just that was your why to learn? Yeah. 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 And just to do something that 
connected me back to where I came from because I had we had no idea. Um, and so but Pechi, mm. he hooked me up. Like t the one thing I went to is called Te Wananga Takiura, mm -hmm. and it's really hard. Like there's a massive waiting list. But somehow Jordan, with his connections, no, don't say that. People might start thinking I'm actually a good person. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> you go no, for a couple people. No, but he he got me he he got me like in on like I think it was the day before you told me like I got you and just go. Al Tupuna. Was with the shush. <laughs> the stars are lighting you good. <laughs> Shut up. Um, anyway, stuff all that. So when you got into it, yes, yes, yes. Um, and then I spent a year there. But so the rule was you could speak for a week in English, and then for the rest of that you just had to. So you were basically forced to to learn, so you could know what was going on, and like I would like the that every week I'd come in and I obviously didn't. I knew like call Caitlin talking or kapai fano all that, but I didn't know anything else. And our teacher would just speak to us in Maori, and we just have to like figure it out and so we didn't have any like writing practicals but we would have to our assessment at the end of each term was we had to speak for a certain amount of time and just te reo maori and so so i started off with eight minutes and then by the end of the year i could speak an hour in full maori to Ooh. my class wow yeah, and like can you still call it all now e -o -i -i -i. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like you do a great job of controlling your narratives and controlling your they say that people who uh try and control you don't control their own life. Where I feel like you're not trying to control anybody else. You move to the beat of your own drama. It's taken a long time to get here, but yeah. you, I imagine you are, and your brother is, but be very proud of yourself too. I am, thank you. How, how did um, learning to, well, how did learning the language change your worldview or like about things about yourself? Um, honestly, like probably the biggest one was just to let go of my shame. Mm -hmm. Like not even just in my culture, but in everything. Like I feel like every day I'm learning and being in that environment, you're literally like a baby, like you're learning how to do things. Mm. And Wait, so learning to reo Māori helped you with learning, letting go of all types of shame? Yeah. Can you unpack that a little bit more? Just like every day you're evolving, like every day I'm, I'm learning new Māori words and every day I'm learning new things about myself. And like te ao Māori is so spiritual and it's so like every nothing's really based on like colonized um, perceptions so <laughs> for me it was just like because I had to do an assessment and I had to speak for a certain time in Māori I had to just drop all my shame like I just had to be vulnerable be okay if I got it wrong otherwise I would fail I would fail mm. my assessment so yeah that if, if anything like I could take away from that year was just like letting go of shame and uh, letting myself get it wrong. fail yeah letting myself like <laughs> okay, we can't we can't swear on this. Oh, love sorry, that. f up. Love that, love that. Do you have a sorry? And you're both actually really good on it. How do you feel about socials? What do you mean? Like, uh, there's such a pers yeah, sorry, there's such a persona with uh, socials. It's a highlight reel. You mm. you give like different parts and who you are, but you're very very good at it. And both of you are amazing. You're funny on socials. It's about Caitlin. She's great. <laughs> you're right. You are great <laughs> on socials. Sorry, Caitlin, but. Uh, I guess even with all the learning that you have done as well, does that make you feel more comfortable when you're on socials, when you see other people on socials? This and, and you're at a different age to us too. Like, Good know? point. Yeah, like Very good point. Like you're a little bit younger and we're older and we're kind of at the tail end hey, of it. I'm 48. <laughs> <laughs> but socials and that big like uh, umbrella cloud that, that comes with it, does it make you feel like, uh, or you're cool with it? Um, No. There's like I feel like I'm as open as I want people to think I am, okay. but I like I because I started getting a platform when I was like 18, and at that time in my life I was like just sharing everything. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> honestly, and I like had no words. Oh, shush! <laughs> he would reply to my stories and be like, "Why are you posting this?" Like, oh no, just send to me. Like, sure. <laughs> yeah, your ones are like something else. Hey, leave it, man. <laughs> no, but over time, like I've I've had to learn like what to put out there but I feel like the biggest thing is like I put a brand of myself out there but who I am on Instagram and TikTok that's not who I am like oh sorry that's and not who crib. I am in general like th I know who I am mm. and people will be like people could hate on the brand of me on social media but like that's not who I am anymore. I think I actually learned that from Ruby Tui by the way oh really yeah she like said I put a brand of myself out of there but it's not actually who I am in real life so oh wow mm. yeah I feel that from Shall you too, because I feel like you used to say like I don't care, but you did care. But I feel like now you actually don't. <laughs> yeah, but I do care, but like just not enough to not post. Yeah. Or like <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think I've had I've had to learn that. Like I've had to learn the hard way because I've put some like 
terrible stuff up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing good. Soul learning, Zane. Yeah, but I learning. love that, like, I love that I have a platform. I love that I can yeah. speak. I love that I can express myself and I'm okay with expressing myself. But, uh, yeah, w- when you're a professional athlete, like, you have to be really careful. So, I had to, like... I Can't mess up the bank. Yeah, there's money involved saying. now. <laughs> yeah, but, no, I love it. Like, I love... I'm, I'm grateful to have a platform, but I know that it, it's not an obligation for me to, like, have to be a certain... Like, it's whatever I want to do. Love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, not last question, but uh, we did want to ask uh, this, like, do you... What are, what are some... Do you have, what are your thoughts on professional women's sport? We, we had a chat about it the other week in terms of, like... Brooke had a very interesting um Which I felt got on. taken the wrong way <laughs> and I got backlash for it, but we can go over it again. No, no, like th- there's there's so much conversation and almost like between men and women's sport it, get, it can get political when people have an opinion on that. What what's what is your like let's t- okay, let's t- quickly talk about the idea of equal pay. Mm-hmm. So <sighs> yeah, what explain what that say is because you're actually in the arena. <laughs> you're actually doing it. You are a pro. I think as a woman because of how hard I work and how harder I work than like male sport, like how hard we have to work to get to the top, I think we deserve equal pay. But I know that, like, this is just reality, unfortunately, but a lot of people watch men's sport, like, rather than women's sport, and that brings in more revenue. So, like, mm-hmm. they get paid off that. But because I'm a woman, 100%, I think we should be getting equal pay. Like, like you don't, s- nobody sees the journey that, female mm. athletes have to go through and it's crazy like i don't have any kids i can do whatever i want but imagine like mums like there's a l- chick in my team who's a police officer so she has to juggle like being a police officer and also being a professional athlete whereas so yeah like in terms of hard work and like having the, the energy journey, to yeah, yeah, yeah i think 100 percent we deserve equal pay but different revenues 100 yeah. percent. it's not on you the revenue that's all yeah. I have to say. Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. That, that, that's my annoyance. Why is that, that, Mark? Why is that? Because they're, they're utilising your skill sets to put a product out there. It's up to them to market it. It's up to them to bring in the revenue. It's up to them to put bums on the seats. It's got nothing to do with you. you do, you're do. you 100% right. You do deserve your work. Yeah. If not harder, you deserve the same amount of money as what your male counterparts get. And it should be the rugby union who is at fault if they're not able to provide that. Yeah. Don't put the product on if you're not going to treat it with respect. Mm. No, respectfully, I 100% agree with that. Yeah. you've I'm had more views on your TikTok. Than probably all of like probably women's rugby views the last year. Do you have any ideas of how we could better market the game? Um, come to the games. Like I've been, that is I've been, I've been to some games. In the That's the point I was the, making during the World Cup campaign. Like sold out. So next, next, the ne- like next few months there was a Super Rugby mm-hmm. for the women's. Like we had the seats were empty. And I'm, not, I'm not educated so. enough around this, so I don't want to give like Kilda, an opinion. Yeah. But no, I understand. Like I don't even, yeah. Like I would come to our games and they'd just I could just see like families and there'd be like a few that the seats were empty. Like how are we marketing it? I feel like it's marketed in a way like, oh, like please come, like please support the game. But it's mm. not actually like come because you want to be there. Like come because it's exciting. But it is exciting. You should have. They should have. You know that the whole that World Cup final that game, and we all agree the best game of code we watched, hands down, over the last probably but look 10 how years. It was a long it was time. Look how it was marketed. Like, people wanted to be there. Bro, they had Rita Ora at the bloody opening. But exactly. The, but Thank the you. argument about it not being as, as brutal, as physical, or as exciting as the male game is rubbish because the most exciting game that happened in the last probably 10 years at Eden Park was that World Cup final. So you yeah. can't argue that it isn't a great product. The next thing is it's got to come down to when that World Cup final happened, it just dropped off. And yeah. no one knew that Super Rugby Opiki was happening. Any last words? No, thank you for having me. Love you. Love you too. Happy to be here. Um, kia ora. You're doing amazing. Kia ora, Wolf. Love C- you, Wolf. Can you say my name's Caitlin Varkolo and do the dishes? My name is Caitlin Varkolo and do the dishes! Let's push! <laughs> Don't make me cry like that again. <laughs> <laughs>